What's going on guys, it's Michael MGF, and today I am very excited to say that I am finally doing another custom LEGO Iron Man minifigure showcase video. And this is the first one in five months, and I do apologize for that, but uh, these Iron Man suits take a ridiculous amount of time to paint, and uh, this is the Mark 17 Heartbreaker version 2, the Mark 33 Silver Centurion, and the Mark 35 Red Snapper, and you, sir, were a pain in the ass, but uh, I am glad that these three are finally done and that I'm bringing you guys more Iron Man suits, because it's not that my interest for Iron Man suits died out, it's just these suits take a long time to paint, and that plus I wasn't working on them as consistently as I would have liked, but given all the time that I did put into them, I usually say this at the end, but I'll say it now, I really would appreciate if you guys leave a like below, because uh, it lets me know that you guys still want to see more Iron Man suits in the future, and if you have any recommendations for future Iron Man suits, uh, definitely leave those in the comments below, I myself have a few ideas, but uh, for now I've got these three, which I've been working on since late August, and uh, I mean then Minecon came up, and different things happened, and I wasn't working on these consistently, I mean I got interested in other minifigures, Splinter Cell figures, um, I was working on the Call of Duty Ghost figures, I've been working on so many other figures aside from these, these have just kind of been like a side project in some sense, um, but I do apologize for that because I know a lot of you guys did want to see these, but uh, sometimes my interests get carried away and I end up making other figures, uh, but regardless, they are done now, finally, and uh, let's go ahead and get a closer look at all three of these brand new custom Iron Man suits. So, this Heartbreaker suit, like you guys, if you have seen my Iron Man 3 showcase, you would have already known that this is the second version of my Heartbreaker suit, and the Mark 17 I've already made in the past. As a matter of fact, it was showcased in May in my Iron Man 3 showcase video, but a lot of you complained that it had a lack of armor and it didn't really, uh, you know, fit well with the rest of the suits. And I totally understood, but I'm like, I'm not a huge fan of sculpting, uh, you know, a lot of detail. So, he didn't exactly get this upgrade until Breakthrough Army actually released his own armor set, which is designed to be the Heartbreaker. So, now that the Heartbreaker is actually an armor set from Breakthrough, and when it was available back in August, I ordered it, and this has been a figure that I've had done for a while now. Uh, but, you know, as you guys know, it took me a while to finish Silver Centurion and the Red Snapper as well. So here he is now, uh, even though he's been done for a while. Regardless... Uh, this minifigure is actually has a lot of detail. Now, something you'll notice right off the bat is the legs. Uh, the legs are just the basic um, Heartbreaker legs that we received in the... Um I believe it was like the Mandarin Showdown or whatever that $10 set was that we got in the uh, Iron Man 3 line, that forgettable set that no one cares about. Uh, <laughs> that's just my opinion. But what I did do to the legs was I did add a little bit of detail to the gold knee pads and uh, a little bit of gunmetal uh, sort of uh, squares beneath those gold knee pads. And that was all I did to the front of the printed legs. Uh, but what I did to the sides was a lot more involved. You can see I've got a lot of different detail. Now, the problem with Iron Man suits is Iron Man suits, they have a lot of detail. Like an incredible incredible amount of detail. So what you see on the legs there, that's about all I could really manage to fit on. And making Iron Man suits, what it is, is just a game of figuring out what you want to put on the actual minifigure because I can't fit everything. What I have to do is miniature tries different aspects of the suit that I really think make it look like the Heartbreaker suit and then put it on my minifigure. And what you see is pretty much what I handpicked. Uh, regardless, I think what I handpicked really does look right and definitely uh, looks as accurate as possible given the scale and the same can be said about the arms. The arms have a nice share of detail with various different lines and outlined uh, gold plating, as you can see there. Uh, one and, and the uh, gold plating on the back of the arms actually looks like kind of sort of uh, like a Y shape. Uh, and then you have like a black line running through some uh, gold plating on the front of the arms. And uh, the actual Breakthrough Armory chest piece is really cool with the arc reactor in the center. And you can see I've got the silver um, sort of uh, plating running from the back. Uh, or, or from the front all the way to the back with some gold plating and this is all outlined in black um, with this armor the actual uh, helmet and um torso armor, I actually started with a uh, base color of black so that I could paint on all the red and all the gold without having to worry about outlining things later on. All the black was already there and I didn't have to outline really much at all. Um, but what I did have to outline would be the shoulders primarily on the torso armor. Uh, what you see on the shoulders, that was added on later. Uh, same can be said for the gunmetal right beneath the outline you see there. Um, and yeah, so you can see um, right... Um, Wow, this is not focusing. Let's get that back in focus there. Uh, but you can see we've got... Uh 
a lot going on in the front of the helmet specifically with the eyes uh, what I did was the breakthrough army um, helmet doesn't actually come the way you see it uh, usually with the breakthrough army the uh, eyes are actually like totally hollow um, and you have to have like a black head or something behind it but what I did was I filled in uh, the eye sockets with clay so that I could go ahead and paint on my own eyes and uh, definitely a good move on my part because not only does it look more accurate but it fits more appropriately with my other Iron Man suits and and uh, yeah, you can see I've got a lot of detail on the back of the suit as well, or the back of the helmet rather, with uh, various gunmetal plating and uh, yellow plating. And obviously, uh, what this is like the plating on the helmet is all three dimensional, and pretty much all I did was highlight it in the most accurate way possible. And a good majority of the helmet is also outlined. Uh, you can see I've got some silver on the top of the helmet as well, which looks very nice, um, and that's definitely accurate as well. And you can see the lines that run uh, sort of like zigzag through the front of his helmet turned out very nice and those are actually indented within the design of the helmet they're not uh, just painted on those are actually sort of like uh, traced if you will um, and yeah and they, pretty much this is all just a huge painted mess of whatever I deemed worthy of making this look like the heartbreaker miniaturized on my own minifigure if that makes sense but uh, pretty much this was all just pretty completely blank um, the helmet and uh, torso armor which is the blank gray color nothing on it uh, the legs already had what you see on the front printed on aside from a little bit of detail on the knee pad on uh, the silver that you see beneath those knee pads so pretty much it was essentially entirely blank and I just did everything you see here uh, for the most part so that is pretty much my heartbreaker version 2 and I'm so glad that I was able to make a version 2 of the heartbreaker because now he really does fit nicely with the rest of my Iron Legion and I really hope you guys like him let me know what you think in the comments below as uh, he's definitely one of my favorite suits to date now if there's anyone to blame as to why this showcase came out so late it's this little bastard. Uh, this is the reason that these Iron Man suits did not see the light of day on my channel until just today uh, when I'm uploading this, obviously. This is the Mark 35. Uh, this is the most complex suit I've made to date, but the Mark 1, which you actually can't see in the background right now, but he's right next to the Mark 2 to the left, but I do have a showcase on him. That, um, you can see that later uh, after watching this video, but th this is probably my most complex suit that I've ever made aside from my Mark 1, and um, it's just an incredibly different suit. It's just insanely complex, and uh, it's got a lot about it that is much different from any other Iron Man suit in the Iron Legion, and uh, it's just a really cool suit. Now for this suit I used various different techniques to make it look the way it does as this is the most drastic looking Iron Man or drastically different looking Iron Man suit I've ever done. I can't emphasize that enough. Um, but the robotic arms themselves those are all made up of like seven different individual pieces and obviously this is the disaster rescue suit this is you know that's what uh, the suit is actually called its official name aside from the red snapper um, and it's just a really interesting uh, suit that I've managed to replicate here and I actually did use a lot of different sculpting techniques um, a lot something that a lot of people complained about on Flickr that is is that the front is a little bit too bulky now I can understand that but if you look at the red snapper the actual suit it's very smooth on the lower half of its torso armor so what I attempted to do was cover it with clay so that it didn't look like the mark 7 because if you guys don't already know the amazing armory torso armor is all modeled after the Avengers mark 7 suit which obviously is a lot different than the red snapper so I have to make it my best attempt to make it look like the suit that I'm trying to create so that's where that happened and I don't honestly see the problem I personally think it looks fine that's just my opinion though let me know what you think um, but you can see the arc reactor uh, you can see that it actually kind of like pops out and that was also sculpted on just like the lower half of the torso armor here and the uh, back half or the entire back of the red snapper suit um, this entire lower half here is all sculpted on as well um, and then you can see uh, this entire armor plating piece right here that was actually um, a piece of cardstock that I manipulated and then solidified to make it look the way it does and I apologize for it going out of focus here and there throughout this video but uh, I think it's kind of worth it to have the hall of armor in the background um, but yeah you can see there is various different details and once again I tried to put on whatever I could with these suits that's really the main challenge is figuring out what I want to put on um, but let's talk about 
about the uh, actual like uh, the actual Red Snapper's arms. The arms are made up of like a, a couple of uh, Lego hook pieces. They're made up of some uh, antenna pieces and uh, just a lot of different pieces that you wouldn't expect. Uh, seven pieces in total for each arm, and you can see I tried to paint on sort of a dotted effect uh, both on the front of his robotic arms and on the upper half of his legs as you can see right there and uh, talking about his legs a little bit more the legs actually have a lot more detail on them than I was anticipating um, and I, once again I tried to cram on whatever I thought would be necessary you know handpicking different sections of the Red Snapper's legs to apply to my minifigure and I definitely think it turned out very nicely uh, with various different areas outlined and the uh, gray plating being outlined with silver and some bolts here and there it really did turn out to look very very nice and uh, the helmet that I really would like to address to make the helmet look like the Red Snapper's helmet what I had to do was I took one of Breakthrough Army's uh, Iron Man helmets, which looks a lot different than LEGO's Iron Man helmets. I like Breakthrough Army's uh, Iron Man helmets, but I personally prefer the official LEGO one. But what I did decide to do was use Breakthrough's um, helmet to make it look like the Red Snapper by sanding down the sides and filling in the eye sockets, just like I did the, um, the Heartbreaker version 2, and paint it in my own way. Paint on these little lines that you see here, which honestly make the helmet, in my opinion, um, and those are really thin lines, by the way and to do all that I had to pretty much uh, completely transform the helmet to make it look the way it does and I definitely think it was a good move on my part because if you ask me I think that's pretty close to the Red Snapper's helmet and it does have various different outline sections uh, you can see some gold plating on the uh, sides of the shoulders there and what you'll also notice is uh, these little silver uh, sort of like I don't know what you would call them, but these like pieces of armor that pop up from his shoulders. And uh, those were actually, if you take um, some official Lego knives, like if you, if like say you get uh, some knives in like a Lone Ranger set or something, those knives will come on a sprue. And I took the sprue from official Lego knife pieces and uh, I just cut off the ends. And that's what these silver pieces are. And they actually turned out to look pretty cool. And I did not know what I was going to do with those. It was actually one of the biggest holdups for the minifigure is what these were going to be. And I'm glad that I figured that out uh, and definitely turned out looking very nice as well and you can see he does actually have his repulsors within his hooks right there which is definitely pretty awesome as well and that is for uh, both robotic arms and you can see to get a good look at the side of the legs there isn't a whole lot going on on the side of the legs and there really isn't on the actual red snapper suit but I am proud with what I did put on uh, either leg and I definitely think it turned out very very nice and the same can be said for the back of the legs uh, you can see the back of the legs sort of have like a buckle type look to it and I definitely think it turned out very nice as well well and uh, I mean the rest is pretty much self-explanatory I think I pretty much went over everything I want to go over once again if there's anyone to blame for this suit for this video being so late it's this guy but uh, once again he was easily the most complicated Iron Man suit I've ever tackled it's funny because the mark one that I made uh, earlier this year it looks more complicated than the red snapper but for some reason I don't remember the mark one being as difficult to make as the red snapper uh, but plus when I was working on the Red Snapper, I didn't work on it for a good two weeks because of Minecon, so that's another reason. Um, but regardless, there's the Red Snapper, guys. That's my take on it, and I'm really happy with the result, and I hope you are as well. And uh, once again, your opinion is greatly appreciated as uh, this had a little bit of controversy on Flickr. So I'd like to know what you think. But uh, yeah, there's my take on the Red Snapper, the Mark 35, which is, of course, the disaster rescue suit. And finally, out of the three Iron Man suits, we've got the Silver Centurion, the Mark 33, aka, in my opinion, the Assassin's Creed suit, because it's got the hidden blades. And uh, speaking of the hidden blades, uh, JBO97 Studios, my good friend Jacob, actually supplied one of these because I was short one. And uh, yeah, they're Brickforge bayonets, actually, that I uh, cut the hooks off of and then glued onto the sides of each hand. And uh, so once again, huge thanks to Jacob. Links to his channel will be in the description below. And uh, yeah, now you'll notice I did utilize a standard Amazing Armory Mark 7 torso piece for this one and uh, what I did the two primary modifications that I made to it was I filled in the chest with clay similar to what I did with the red snapper so that I could paint on my own arc reactor rather than rely on the circular one that's already molded onto the armor piece and you'll see that the arc reactor is a sort of triangular shape uh, with a white outline around the blue area which definitely turned out looking very nice and um 
Yeah, so you'll notice that the uh, arms, actually, the arms have a lot going on. Um, you can see, like, there's sort of, like, bolts on either arm, uh, those circular sections you see in the middle there. Um, and they have sort of, like, uh, two uh, triangular plates on the upper area of either arm. And uh, just it, it's pretty much self-explanatory, but what you see on the arms was 100% painted. And I definitely think it turned out looking very nice and very accurate. And you'll notice what else I did to the Mark VII torso armor piece is I sliced these shoulders in half. And uh, the reason being is because it just it's simply more movie accurate because the Silver Centurion in the movie actually has much thinner shoulders than your average Iron Man suit. Uh, so to capture that accuracy, I just went ahead, took a saw to it or hacksaw or other, and uh, now they're Darth Mauled. So that's the way I see it. Oh, I'm a Star Wars fan. But uh, yeah, you'll notice that the legs have their own share of uh, detail to them on the front along with on the side. Let's just move this up a little bit so you can see the legs there. Uh, and you'll notice that this suit in comparison to the Heartbreaker that I just showed you and the Red Snapper, it is a little bit simple. Now, there's a reason for that and that is simply because it's a simple looking suit. There isn't a whole lot to the Silver Centurion other than its unique arc reactor and the blades coming from the wrists. Um, it is a pretty cool suit, but not one of my favorite suits, but I know a lot of you guys wanted to see it, so here's my rendition of it. And um, yeah, now his face mask is actually a War Machine face mask. I didn't paint the face mask silver, so that means this section right here, the bottom, is actually painted red. And I did fill in the eyes with the light blue, just like I do on all my Iron Man suits. I, I tend not to really explain that anymore, because it's pretty obvious that I did uh, alter the color of that. And you'll notice with this Iron Man suit, just like all my Iron Man suits, I outlined all the three-dimensional proportions and everything, all that stuff on the back, and it definitely looks pretty awesome. Easily makes any Iron Man helmet look 10 times better, and I discovered that last year, and it is definitely a technique that I still like to use on my Iron Man suits. Um, but for the most part, the legs are all painted by me. Uh, I, pretty much everything you see here was all painted by me. All that detail you see on the front with all the silver and different outlines. Um, and it's pretty self-explanatory for that matter. And I definitely think it turned out pretty nice. You'll see I have some extensions of the silver right here on this area on either side of the face mask. And uh, yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for the Silver Centurion. I know you guys really did want to see this suit. And I'm definitely really happy with its results. And uh, definitely makes for a great addition to the Iron Legion. So, what did you order? The Red Snapper. It's supposed to be an interesting fish in the Gulf of Mexico. Good luck with that. And there's your Red Snapper. Fresh you cut with the Mark 33. Aren't you supposed to be dead? Aren't you supposed to have two eyes, Director Fury? Alright guys, so that about wraps up this showcase on these three brand new Iron Man suits and uh, if you enjoyed this showcase or found yourself inspired to make your own Iron Man suits, be sure to leave this video a like below as your support really does go a long way and I spent a tremendous amount of time working on all three of these, especially the effing red snapper. So, like I said, your support really does go a long way, and just hitting that like button can really mean a lot to me, so uh, once again, your support is very much appreciated. You can also follow me on Twitter and the Book of Face, and link to both of those is also in the description below in there. I post all kinds of behind-the-scenes photos and updates and stuff and, and all that good stuff about what I'm doing and, you know, what's to come for my channel. So, uh, yeah, if you, don't, if you don't appreciate, you know, the weekly basis that you get on here, you can go ahead and check out my Facebook and Twitter, where I where, you know, things are more consistent in that regard. But, uh, yeah, so these custom minifigures took a while to make, and uh, I'm really glad they are finally done, and they're definitely not the last of the Iron Man suits, as, uh, you know, making Iron Man suits is super awesome, and the Iron Legion is just a really cool idea. Not sure if I ever will have all the Iron Man, you know, the, all the Iron Legion suits done, uh, maybe one day, maybe 2015 or 2016, I don't know. It's just, that, it's just making 40 Iron Man suits. I've got, like, almost 20 of them now, but... 40 Iron Man suits is unrealistic given how long it took just to make these three. Now remember I wasn't working on these for like a good two weeks out of the two months that I was working on them. Um, but regardless, I do apologize for how long it took. But once again, if you follow me on Twitter and Facebook, you would have already seen these by now. And that's why you should, because it's totally worth it. So, yeah. Alright guys, that's it. Iron Man suits. Hope you enjoyed. I'm gonna go. And I'm gonna go work on other figures. GTA and other figures. So...
Igor, are you sad you couldn't interrupt my video? Well, too bad. For those of you who stuck around even after the outro, this is what the shot looks like if I zoom out all the way. Gunship box for the win. Silver face mask that was from... Uh, I'm gonna redo this part. Gosh damn it.